Hey everybody, it's Eric Mitchell. I'm here with uh, Ramon. Ramon is CEO of Client Direct Mortgage. And, you know, I'm super excited about everybody getting to see what, what Ramon has built. Uh, it definitely st stood out to me as a game changer platform. And, and uh, I'm excited for you all to see what I saw as to why I, I went with Client Direct. And with that, Ramon, let's let's jump into the tech stack and what you uh, what you built and why you built it this way. Wonderful, wonderful, Eric, and we're extremely happy to have you. Um, um, you're you've done an exceptional job in in the space for a number of years. Um, great recognition, um, a lot of integrity. People know who you are, and I'm super excited that you know you've come over to our team to kind of help us expand and really get the word out about the value that we can bring loan officers. So, without further ado, let's kind of jump into the tech part of everything, right? Let's talk about what we're using as a LOS and CRM, how you price, credit, all of that good stuff. So um, we came up with the idea that w the the tech stack should be flattened a bit. So that's the that's the principle in which we kind of developed our, our um, platform. And we use Salesforce in order to do this. Of course, you always need an LOS, all right? So we use Meridian Link as the LOS and the pricing engine. But Salesforce is the driver or overlays all of these other components and systems. The beautiful thing about that is Salesforce is one of the strongest CRMs out there. Strong because of its ability to plug into absolutely anything, right? So the LOS is plugged into our system. The pricing engine is plugged into our system. And all types of other, whether you're talking about landing tree, eye contact, phone systems, all plugged into the Salesforce. If something is not there, we can put it there. And that's why we use this. Something else that we found as we were getting down the road is, is Salesforce was mendable to really accepting the, the overall sort of operational structure that, that loan origination is. We put the 3.4 Mismo, we built that into the Salesforce. So there's so many data points, same data points you would have in an LOS, now on your CRM level. And as we walk through this, you're going to see why that's important, how um, it can really help the loan officer move their business. Okay, so this is just simply a dashboard, right? So any loan officer can have their own dashboard with all the information, whether you're looking at leads, the number of realtors that you have, the files, locks, anything you want to know about your business. If you can dream it, we can, we can put it together in a platform for you. So a um, number of different dashboards that allows you, again, to see your information, lock loans, you know, active pipeline, applications coming in, um, who's uploaded documents, all that good stuff is, is in here. Now, let's sort of move on to an actual file. The point of sale is part of the Salesforce, okay? So I want people to understand that the POS and the CRM are all together, right? So you're gonna, everybody has their own individual link, just like a normal POS that you're accustomed to. And what I'll do is kind of move, move to that section because that is the start. So if you were to send out a link, a client would log in, make an account and be able to come in here and complete their application, okay? Um, that, it's a regular TurboTax style application. So they'll, they'll fill out all of that 1003 information and then they'll be allowed to be able to upload documents, right? They can come in here and do that. And all of this is fed directly into the Salesforce. And keep in mind, the Salesforce talks to, to the LOS. So there's this nice path of everything that goes through, okay? Um, clients able to come in here, upload all of the documents. Um, you're able to, again, again, to see that on the Salesforce side. Something else that we've done in the POS is sort of add additional workflow items that you don't normally find. Like, for example, you can um, sign your disclosures, right? So if the disclosures are out, the client needs to sign their disclosures, we can drive them back to the central place, the same place that they went to to do their original application. So whether you're talking about signing the initial disclosures, the locked LE, the CD, it's all in here. Um, this will kick out, give a link to the doc magic, right? So these buttons appear and disappear based on when someone has actually done the activity. Once they sign the disclosures, then this button's going to disappear, right? Yeah, Ramon, if I can interrupt, because if I'm watching this video right away, yeah. I'm going, oh my God, what, what are they charging for this? Oh my God, yeah. this must be, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Must be expensive. Can we, can we just touch on that just real quick? Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. We should... stack, so for Salesforce, the LOS, pricing engine, 
the tech stack. Yeah. What is the loan officer paying for that per month? What is, let's just say that real quick. Yeah, we try to bring extreme value. So it's $79 per month. Total. $79 per month. For so I, for whether I close tech. one loan a month or 50 loans a month, $79. per loan officer, it's $79. Yes. And that's yes. the CRM. That's the, the loan origination software. Mm-hmm. That's the pricing engine, the point mm-hmm. of sale, all of it. Yes. Yes, all of it. Yeah, cool. we're really trying yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. The whole idea is to bring as much value as we can uh, to the loan officer. We do have a separate company, and there are two other individuals that worked at Salesforce for many years that helped build out this um, this platform. So we had this vision from the beginning to bring a, a, a system that integrated all these different components. Because let's be honest, it's hard to when you have your CRM over here and it's this. It's, it's this system. And then you have your LOS over here. It's this system. You have to take, the, you know, it's just, it's difficult to do. And and the systems don't have, there's no harmony between them. Um, in our system, with, with the POS being incorporated as part of the Salesforce, then every single one of your leads are coming in there, right? So imagine like the REO sections in there for every application. Well, you can go back and look at that stuff and kind of do different different campaigns from a CRM perspective, right? So you can look and see how many additional properties do all of these clients own? And maybe I should send out an email about possibly refinancing the other properties. Well, that's all part of your platform now. So you can start to think about your business from a little different perspective. And that's the opportunity that we wanted without losing any of the normal functionality that they're accustomed yeah. to. And, and also with the Dexac, because it's Salesforce and the, the extreme ability to be able to plug other things into it, which is one of Salesforce's biggest strengths, yeah. So you've already done integrations. Let's just use an example like Arrive. Hey, I'm a loan officer, broker loans. You know, I'm at XYZ company. I'm used yeah. to Arrive. Just want to use Arrive. Right? Yeah. My understanding, you've already done an integration with Arrive in a Salesforce. You want to come on board with CloudDirect? You can use Arrive, right? Yeah. You're paying for it, but but you can use it. Right. We have a seamless way to get the information from Arrive to to um Salesforce, right? So if folks, we ha- we as a company have an Arrive um, um, subscription as well. So if you want to use Arrive, we can get all your stuff in the Salesforce, no problem. We want you to be comfortable with your current workflow, right? Um, this is not about um, force adoption. This is a system that can run parallel to what you're doing already. You might find value um, as you as you're going through the process. You will find value, and you'll say, "Hey, I love the way you guys have these different desks and the appraiser." desk is able to do this for me. They did my rebuttal for me before I even asked about it, right? Before I even knew I needed a rebuttal, the rebuttal was started, right? On the valuation. So it's like there's certain things in our system because it's not just about the technology, it's the people behind the technology as well. The the technology is there to enhance the people to do a better job for the loan officer. It's the is the main perspective that we are sort of like coming from. So um let's look at this same file from it's like there's like two windows, right? So think of the the file and all the information is inside of this room. And whether you're the loan officer or whether you're the client, right, you're looking through at that that two different two different windows, but looking through at that same information. And what I mean by that is like the document section, for example. These this is the same documents that you saw posted over here on this side. We could set it visible and not set it visible. Um, all of the documents for a transaction will be included as as part of your Salesforce. So this does sit on your Salesforce level, right? So if you're, we're, here's a good example. If there's items that the client hasn't uploaded yet, every day in the morning, an email is gonna go out asking them, telling them they have things to do. Please go back to your portal and upload these additional items. Now, if there was a CD that needed to be signed, if there was an LE, um, if there was an appraisal that needed to be paid for, the system would recognize that and automatically pop it onto this email. That goes out so every morning. A, do, do I need do I need to program that, or it's already pre-programmed? I'm just setting up and it goes. It's already pre-programmed. You it's set up and it goes. It's part of the it's part of the workflow. So there's other, there are people behind here that are doing certain things, right? There's like the disclosure desk. They're setting up your disclosures. Once they set up your disclosures, then that email is going to go out. Now, if that doesn't get signed, and in here we have something called the disclosure sign date. So if the disclosure sign date is not populated, but there is a set of initial disclosures that is um, in the file, then the system knows, hey, I don't have a disclosure sign date. I need to take these disclosures and ask the client to sign them every morning until they do. 
And then one day there's going to be a disclosure sign date. Then the system knows, hey, I don't need to ask them anymore because the system, because now it's been inputted that those disclosures are signed. Same thing with documents being uploaded and all that sort of thing. The whole document structure we built out in Salesforce. So you're not going in here guessing um, the different categories or whatnot. Every single category is here, income, assets, all that good stuff, right? Credit, applications. Um, now, based on the questions and the point of sale, it's going to automatically generate your document list. So if you have a, it, it even asks things like, is there a trust account? There's certain questions that we added to try to make this process more efficient. Because what is this really? It's really about getting as much information from the outset so we can have an accurate set of disclosures, set everything up properly, and that trickles down to having a good submission, which means few conditions as if, you're coming if, out. If I, can ask, if I can ask another quick question, because mm -hmm. I, I have a certain level of OCD. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends in the mortgage space, right, they have extreme OCD. Right? Yeah. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think like the way they think. So if, I, if I'm a, a, a top producing loan officer and I go into the point of sale and there's a question that's being asked at the point of sale that I would, I would like to modify it. Yeah. Right. So like I'm thinking of um, somebody who does a lot of ITIN loans, right? And so yeah. they want to know, right? Like it's not just are you a citizen or a permanent resident or a non-resident, right? Like there's more, there's more questions that could be asked than those three categories, right? Right. If if it makes sense and they come back and say, hey, I would like to point of sale questions modified because here's my good reason. Yeah. Is that something that, that as a company we can we can take a look at? Absolutely. Absolutely. Put it on the roadmap and then we can. Um, and that's what we want. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about our platform as well. It's not like it's um, it's not a third party where it's like, hey, this is the way it is. And you can request something and it's never going to happen. Right. This is our our baby, we're able to modify it the way that we need to. And it's all about making it better and easier and more efficient for the for the loan officer. So not only can we, but we want that type of engagement from the loan officers. So I think that's gonna be sort of like refreshing for them to be able to contribute in that, in that, uh, in that way. Okay, so now if you're moving through a file, you'll notice there's a Chevron up here. So it just kind of goes through all of the different steps and it is granular and it's granular because um, as we're getting through the different steps, it drives different activities, like, you know, ordering appraisals or it's time for the CD to go out and all these other sort of things. So all of this is sort of like programmed on the back end. It's, it's a very, it's a task-based system. So it's automatic tasks that will be generated based on where the file is at through the process. And you can start to see some of this stuff on the side. You can see um, review, uh, you, review and confirm the client has signed the lock, L, lock loan estimate. Well, this is going to a team that kind of is a pipeline. They, they do pipeline overview. So they're watching the different sections of the pipeline and they're triggered by certain tasks just to make sure things are moving along, right? So there's all, again, there's a, there's a very high, high level of sort of like um, task, task management and, and workflow to make sure that your guys' loans are going to meet these timelines. Right. We don't want we want to plug all the holes that we could possibly see. And that's what we've done. Um, and a lot of this stuff uh, that's part of the system has been because there was a hole here or there or, or something slipped. So if you're looking at this particular file, um, this is one that's a little bit further down the process. We're into conditions requested. So we even surface and it doesn't matter if this if, this, if you took the loan broker or if you took the loan as a uh, correspondent bank loan. We're going to treat it the same way. The workflow is going to be the same for you. The experience is going to be the same for that loan officer. Um, we surface all conditions, and then the team starts to work on the So you can come in here and kind of see where your conditions are um, from the approval, no matter no matter what the lender, right? Um, you can also come into the documents where you'll see the, the official approval or whatnot. The, you have the ability to quote the loan right? The pricing engine has been brought into the Salesforce. So you can come in here and get the different pricing from investors, right? And not only does it have the, you know, coupon for every single, for every single investor with a drop down, so you can see other investors, but it has all the third party fees. So we have title company, we have first American title that's bringing in a third party fees. So every single one of these quotes is extremely accurate. And it's really in the structure of almost like an LE, if you can tell here. So we call it a loan quote, but you can see that it has the origination, it has the section B, has all your third-party fees, 
has even goes as detailed to get sometimes, you know, people miss out on some of those recording fees because they're by county or whatnot. So that information is in here as well. So you can feel comfortable and confident in, in your fees, which you guys might be accustomed to, but just want to show that that's still, that's still present. And, um, and, and that's system. all happening. Bank, bank loan, broker loan. I'm still, still here. I never leave. Whether I'm choosing to bank the loan or broker loan, doesn't matter. I'm still here. Right, right. Now in some brokers, we have a lot of brokers. We have over like, there's like 85 to 90 different brokers. Not all of them are in this particular pricing engine. This pricing engine focuses on the 22 um, correspondent lenders, right? Now, okay. when you start getting into the broker, there's other there's other options. We can use lender price. We can use loan sifter. We can go straight into the portal. I mean, what you'll find is I think a lot of loan officers have, you know, they have a number of brokers, five or six brokers that they really like out of the whole group. And they just start to interact with those particular brokers and then our system on the on the bank side of things, right? Some of them have okay. a loan sifter account. So there's different there's different um, ways to kind of like work and we'll help you navigate these things also. But if, um, but if I'm brokering a loan, I'm still in Salesforce. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Right. I'm not I'm not I'm not because in the IMB world, right, mm -hmm. what I'm what I'm doing in the IMB world is I'm submitting my loan to my internal help desk who has to control it. Then they upload it to the to the wholesale investor because they have mm -hmm. to track it. And I lose I lose control. Oh, no, no, no. You're going to see everything going on through the process, right? So the team is in the background doing these things on your behalf, um, but you're still going to see and know everything that's going on. And that's another another beautiful part of this. And I probably would say the strongest part of our, our platform of all is the communication piece. So over here, we have the chatter. Now, everybody will get... You not only you have a Salesforce app as well, and I'd recommend that everybody you know download the Salesforce app because this is going to be the key to you communicating back to the team. So when somebody chatters, um, think of it as some people chatter uh, Slack. It's very similar to Slack. So think about Slack being on an individual Slack channel on every single one of your files where you're communicating strictly about that particular file. Okay. That's built into part of the Salesforce. So I, uh, Crystal, who who works with the, on the prelim desk, you know, she uploaded the tax cert, the wire, um, the fee sheet in the Salesforce, right? This, and she's letting the loan officer and the processor know, right? So we have different desk, appraisal desk, setup desk, um, you know, I, all the way, all the way through the, you know, everything that you can imagine, preliminary disclosure, lock desk, all those things are there, and our team is communicating on the record right with you when things are starting to happen like you can see that we have an approval desk so jamie is letting you know hey that the loan letter the approval has been uploaded to the system and all conditions have been surfaced to the conditions tab so you're that's going to hit you and say ping on your phone so you know immediately when your loan is uh approved and not only that now you can go in look at the conditions and kind of see what they're going on what's going on at the same time we're doing the processing for you then this file just got status got changed, right? To now, to now, um, conditions requested are approved, and then the processor. As soon as it's approved, it's going to ping the processor that's already assigned on the file. The whole team is on the record as well, right? So if you come down here, you can see everybody that's on your team working on your file. Okay, so now Max, right? Max is going to come in here. He's going to get pinged. Hey, this one got approved. He's going to start the and the conditions are surfaced because before they before they change it to approve, they surface everything. So that way the processor can boom, hit the ground running. Right. So the processor is going to hit the ground running. Look at these conditions, create a things to do list. Right. Back in the document section, because the majority of conditions are satisfied by a document. Then that things to do email is going to go back out to the client. We're going to notify the loan officer. Hey, these are. These are the items that we need. And then if there's anything internal, the team will start working on those. So yeah, it's like a very seamless process that doesn't need, they're, they're, we never, things things never get stuck. We're, we're constantly in motion on the, on the files, right? And then you're able to come in here and see absolutely everything that's going on. Now, whether you need to look at the communication, talk back to the team, let them, you know, they'll ask you certain things. Maybe they were unsure if you wanted to impound account or not. They'll just at you when they at you on here, like at Hillary, uh, then that's when it will ping your phone, right? Or your, it also come through your email or whatnot. And if you're in Salesforce, it'll give you an alert too. So 
there's a lot there to be able to make sure that your that your file is moving through efficiently. Um, you generate your pre-approval letters through the Salesforce. Um, you request your credit through the Salesforce. You can create the LOS file, you know, when you're ready to do that through the Salesforce. There's so much that's being done through the Salesforce. It's like, I haven't seen, I mean, to be quite honest, um, past our system, I haven't seen an integration of a, I mean, we call it a CRM, but it's really past a CRM. Like Salesforce is not just a CRM. You could really yeah, you're build running, you're whatever running, you're, you're yeah, yeah you it. can build. Yeah, exactly. And the beautiful thing about this is that we're still working. We're still working on things. We're actually bringing in, it's not here yet, but I don't know if you remember all the MGIC sort of like um, income sheets, like you could do yeah. self-employed yeah. and all of yeah. those. All the all those are already built out in the back end of the Salesforce. So when you start to get documents in, we can we can do all of that all those calculations, and you can even do them yourself, um, and just see all those calculations within those sheets um, as part of the Salesforce. So it's like we're really trying. So to- it'll auto populate the fields from the fields in Salesforce. Yes, yes, yep. So yeah, there's a. I mean, it doesn't stop. Like we're, we're just, you know, you, you can constantly get better and better and better. Okay. So I think this gives, this sort of like gives a good idea um, of, of the overall flow that we have going and how much, and how much you're really doing on the Salesforce site. But let's say, Hey, I want to run my own AUS or I want to do this or, or, you know, there's something I want to do on the LOS. Well, you just come over to your quick links, you click the Meridian link LOS, and then that will open up your LOS side of things. Okay, so here I'm already in a file that we had open, but this is this is the traditional LOS that you're accustomed to seeing. You know, it has the whole the regular application pages, borrower assets, liabilities, REO. If you want to, again, if you want to run the AUS, you can do that right here. The team is working in this in this platform um, to do a lot of things to help you on your file, um, and and yeah, that's just you ha- you have access to the sides. You're still going to need to have that just to run your DU and you know. Yep. Et cetera. Right. There's things you got to do inside the LOS that you're not going to do with Salesforce, but exactly. Typically, that's stuff that your processor is going to do for the most part, not so much the loan officer. But if the loan officer wants to do it, they just click it, go in, do it. It's fine. Exactly. Exactly. And even if you want, now keep in mind that the the pricing that's inside the Salesforce that I showed you is driven by Meridian Link as well. Meridian Link has an LOS and they have a PPE engine. So if you want to come in here and price directly in the in the PPE engine, and that's totally fine too. You just come in here, price it out. A lot of people will be cu- um, accustomed to seeing this. Maybe some will, some won't. But this is a pretty popular LO, LOS and PPE that um, a number of lenders use. And, so and, and right now it's got 20, you said 22 correspondent yeah. investors banking, and it'll rank them same as any other pricing engine. It'll rank them based on who's giving the best price based on that scenario. Exactly. And then it's, it, 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 you close along with any of the 22, it's a banked loan, not a brokered loan. Correct. Um, and so you have all that flexibility from a banking standpoint versus brokering. Uh, but if you want to broker, you can bank it, broker it, just 100% to the loan officer's discretion on every loan. Yep. Yep. You hit the bullseye. You hit the bullseye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of control and not just, and and from the banking perspective, it's like, it's not us telling you or, or hiding the investors, um, you know, behind um, what we're showing, mm-hmm. basically. We right. we just allow you to see all of the the investors and you make the decision. When I, when, yeah, I saw that on the pricing. Yourself. When I run the pricing, it shows me all the yeah. investors who's, who's giving me best price. All right. lock with that investor, but it's still a banked loan, even though I'm I'm locking it investor specific. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So so let's kind of like let's let's round out with a little bit of um the the support pieces. Um, you know, the Salesforce, the the process. You know, I, I understand when you know people are coming over, they're trying to learn new processes and we want to make this as easy as possible. So what we've done here too is kind of put together a workflow and this is, you'll find a lot of resources, you know, right in the quick links, loan workflow. So if you were to click that, you can come in here and kind of see all of those statuses that we were just talking about. And this just essentially tells you what you need to do. And then we have little videos that pop up. So the little loom videos on each one of these that you can go in and kind of see, Hey, I need to figure out how to my client needs to upload, you know, divorce decree. I didn't see that pop up. You know, how do I go in and add that to his system, right? So any little thing that you may need to do, whether it's a purchase, whether it's a refinance, how to set the loan up, all the all of the um, the loan submission, like when you're ready to have your loan disclosed, there's a form that you fill out that's part of the Salesforce talk walks you through on how to do that. All of this, of course, is part of your onboarding as well through Trainual and whatnot. We do a we do a three day onboarding course. 
But th this here is snippets, little two minute, three minute videos. So that way it's palatable. If you forgot how to do something, you can come back in here and figure it out. So that's accessible for you. We also have the um, knowledge base, um, sort of like internet, where this is just a plethora of information. That's why we call it the brain. So anything you want to know about the company or how to do things, there's so many videos and support here. Um, tickets, there's a number of tickets that can be created if you're having problems with anything, whether it be your email or you have a scenario request. We understand like coming over to uh, this hybrid model where you do have access to so many lenders and so many programs, you know, a lot of times it's challenging. How, how do I navigate this? Well, I always like to think about it from, I mean, it normally starts, unless you're just perusing and just trying to educate yourself. So let's, you know, that's just you looking across the, the whole gambit. But a lot of questions start with a scenario. I have a particular client that I'm trying to get a loan for, right? So we'll help you with these items. You come in here, do a scenario request, uh, make a ticket, put in the Salesforce URL. So we always try to drive you to the Salesforce. So create your client in Salesforce as a contact. Um, then you'll have all the information in there. Go ahead and put in the chatter section right? What you're trying to do or to give us a little bit more detail about, about the, um, the deal. And then simply drop it in here and let the team help navigate you to what a couple of lenders or whatnot you should use for the particular scenario. So not only this is, again, I think I really want to stress that the system that we've developed is not just about the technology. It's more about the people in the workflow. It's the, it's the subject matter knowledge I think that we have around working in this broker channel and now putting the correspondent piece as well and giving the spirit of a broker, right? But you're a banker because you still have all that control that you like. Um, so I think that's the, that's the real value that we've sort of uh, brought to the table. And again, it's the ability to help you navigate, execute, and still give a high level of service um, to your clients while, while having this you know, extra value, if you will. Oh, man, dude, dude, this is exciting. Is there anything else that stands out? Uh, I know somebody's been watching this now for, for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, is there something else that stands out? Otherwise, um, you know, no. if you're watching this, if you're watching this video, sorry, Ramon, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, I think we hit on all the key points. There's, you know, there's a lot to it. Yeah. There's a lot more that can be done, but I think we hit on the, we hit on the key value propositions. And I think that, um, no, I think that we did a great job. Yeah, the, and, and if you're watching this, right, like who are the 22 correspondent investors? How do I get access to this? How, right, reach out to me. I'll yeah. get you access to all of this. We'll get you access to pricing uh, so that you can run some pricing scenarios compared to what you've got now. Um, just just let me know whatever you need. We'll, we'll get it to you. But these are exciting times. Ramon, thank you very much. Awesome. Um, and and uh, I'm excited for 2024 and 2025 and where we're going with all this. Yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. I think we're really going to do good by some folks. I'm excited. Thanks, man. All right. Awesome.